fans, we are back. We're coming from 401 Games live in the center of all board game nerddom in Toronto. It is a busy Wednesday night. I am your host, Timbo Slice, with my illustrious guest, the hare himself, Alan Fung. How are you, sir? How's it going, guys? Uh, we have two excellent players lined up to play tonight, and I think we're about ready to give them the cue to start. Whenever they are ready, they have uh, rolled off for initiative. There is an initiative token at the very, very top of your screen, just sneaking underneath the time uh, on the left. Initiative was rolled off and won by Mr. Eric Zhang on the left, playing against the formidable uh, Mr. Mike Reverso, who is actually Paul Heaver's hero because he put stay on target on Yen Yum. Um, and that's the, we're going to go with that. We heard it from him himself. We heard it from him himself. Uh, players have shook hands. We're ready to begin, and we are off to the races. Uh, Alan, thank you for uh, sitting with me and enjoying a little uh, banter on a Wednesday night. My pleasure. It's our first time doing this, actually. Together, I think it is really. the first time yeah, that we've yeah, been yeah. together. It is true. Yeah. Uh, would you like to go through one of the two players' lists, and I'll do the other one? But we have some great uh, funky PTL lists for this top eight cut match here tonight. Yeah, I'll go through Eric's because it has far fewer upgrades. Um, <laughs> so he has Just Pava with R382, so that's the, the stress bot. Integrated, obviously, and then a PS1 Oztuck with Tactician for more stress. Another PS1 Oztuck with Tactician for even more stress. And then AP5 uh, with Weapons Engineer and M9G8 to give overall action economy. So you want to run through us really quickly what uh, Weapons Engineer M9G8 combo offers Eric's list? Um, well, Weapons Engineer allows it to, I believe, target block two ships at a time. And then uh, M9G8 pretty much gives one ship Predator. Uh, he can target lock one of his own ships, and then that ship gets to reroll one die. So Jess already has rerolls, so she's fine. Uh, and then one of the Oztox will have a reroll. And I believe... Do you, wait, can you Weapons Engineer two of your own ships? I believe he's just done that, Alan. Okay, well, there you go. He's um, uh, He's got AP5 uh, with target locks, those fancy gold squadron uh, target locks on both of the Wookiees oh, uh, who are out in front. He's got three PS1s and a PS3, so um, he's going to have lots of guns, and he's going to know how to use those guns. They're going to be quite accurate. Yeah, it's actually a ton of firepower. He's got two 180 RX. You have Jess, which just puts out tons of damage, and then you have this... AP5 that you don't want to shoot at, but at the same time, uh, just gives so much uh, consistency to those arcs. Yeah, it's a great, really great combination, because if you get too close to try and go for AP5, to try and burn that uh, sheath of bead down, then you're within range two, and you're probably taking two stress tokens from those Wookiees. Yeah. Oh. You so just, You just want to say the word Wookiees just to do that. Oh, yeah. I'm not gonna do it every time though. Don't worry. I've been I've already been cautioned about sound effects on uh, on the VW TV live stream. So okay, so walk us through uh, Mike's list then. Mike Reverso always brings some jank. I have always loved it, and I myself have had the pleasure of playing against one of his uh, Eden Vril uh, loadouts before. So I will run you through it. To start, this is Eden Vril without the title. That is a YT2400 with a one point cannon that he cannot fire in 360 degrees. So it's got a front arc, because apparently the Y20, for those Dash players out there, this is just a reminder, the, the YT2400 is actually sold with a front arc printed on the base plate. I don't believe you. No, many people wouldn't believe me when I say that, but this is just to reiterate that. Uh, Eden Vril's ability says if you are firing at a target that is stressed, you roll an extra die? Extra primary. Extra primary die. So that's why the Outrider title, title cannon is pretty much useless. So given the fact that um, Eden fires last, and he's got two higher PS ships that are stress mechanics as well, good chance he's going to get to be able to trigger that Eden Vril uh, pilot ability. Eden Vril's got his tractor beam. Uh, he's got black market slicer tools, which is going to be handy because there's going to be uh, stress being thrown around like a bloody food fight in this, uh, in this match coming up. Uh, smuggling compartment to take that slicer and any pursuit lasers. Now this is an interesting um, turn of events because usually PS3 is a good bet to be able to be a blocker, so you're going to give yourself that any pursuit laser to be able to move, get in position, and block somebody. Uh, I don't know if Mike was banking on Eric showing up with three PS1s because now even Jess 
has initiative, so Jess can move, avoid Eden, because the anti-pursuit lasers only trigger if you run into him. Yeah, and even if it comes into play, there's so much haul on Eric's list that I don't think he's going to give a crap. Um, no, it's nice to block a Wookiee and deny the uh, the reinforced token, but absolutely. at the same time. Uh, so the second ship in Mike's list is Thane Kyrell, one of my favorite arcs. His pilot ability reads, if you are the ship that is attacking, uh, and you are in my arc at range one to three, and you fire at somebody else who's in range one of me, I get a free action. Right. So that's a really handy uh, thing for uh, Thane, because he's got th up to three actions. He's got vector thrusters, he's got a focus target lock, um, and he's also got tactician, so he can stress out of both arcs, front and back, uh, and M9G8 as well. So it looks like Thane has put his target lock on what is uh, coming to be known as Stresra, or Stress Ezra, many different types of loadouts that we've seen so far on this little sheet to feed, but all of them are a big pain in the zip me up. Absolutely, especially with the pulse ratio, that thing is not going to go down anytime soon. Um, in this matchup in particular, Ezra is going to be able to stress himself before any of Eric's ships fire, so it's always going to have that defensive glitter stim. Um, and then an interesting point here that uh, I know, Tim, you know about this, but <clears throat> you are forced to use the evade result from the reinforce so if Ezra rolls let's say one hit you are forced to evade that with the reinforce and then uh, that triggers Luke Skywalker so it's, there's a very good possibility that we could see double stress um, Oztox even though they have one agility and yeah I don't know it's an interesting combination I mean you can fit up to three different types of reshots re on Ezra you can take either bays and shoot at two different targets to stress them Gunner to shoot at the same one. Uh, I love that Max Lulls, uh Mike's been able to fit Luke Skywalker. It's a seven-point crew. It's the second most expensive crew in the game. And it says that it acts exactly like Gunner, only you also get a focus mod on the second shot, which is great for so, somebody like Ezra. The hilarious part is we have Trick Shot, Luke Skywalker, Pulse Ray Shield, R3A2. The ship is still 28 points. 28 points. That's an Omega Leader with a hull upgrade. No, that's less. a that's less. <laughs> it's less than an Omega Leader with a hull upgrade. It's uh it's a bargain and a half. I mean even I mean you've got the seven point crew, uh, the two point recharge thing. It's it's just lovely. Don't forget it it can even coordinate this turn if if it really wanted to, right? Because it's at PS five, so it still gets to trigger its its stress. So if Mike realizes this, he can barrel feign uh, or Eden even, and then uh, and then go ahead and stress himself right off the bat for combat. So he has plenty of options available to him. Who do you think has the advantage in this matchup? Uh, I would say that on paper, definitely Eric has the advantage here. Not because of any funky pilot abilities, just because of sheer firepower. Yeah, just and he's lined strength. he's lined himself up for a beautiful approach here. He can yeah. bank left once, bank right once on the following turn, and he's right up in Mike's grill. Yeah. And he's just going to be able to punch uh, Mike's list. So Mike has to play this smart. He, he has a lot of joustiness in his list as well, Yeah. but nowhere near what Eric has lined up. Yeah, I think Thane is a really, really key piece in this matchup, and if Thane gets burned down quickly, which Eric most likely will be targeting first, um, Mike's damage output is going to drop significantly. He's going to have an Ezra that can double tap, sure, against Wookiees. No big deal. He's only throwing two attack dice. And he's got an Eden, which really relies on the stress to deal damage. He can't really focus anyone that he wants to. The track to me might help him out here, but with the rock placement, I don't think it'll really matter. Um, yeah, the tractor beam will definitely help if Eric's list gets where Mike's list is now, later right. in the game, where those rocks are. But, I mean, putting a Wookiee behind a stress cloud is handy, because then they don't get their reinforced the following turn. You'll also notice I didn't do the Wookiee roar that time. I'm disappointed. Um, you are dis <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm kind of in love with Eric's list. It's really great. Um, I'm in love with both of them, to say the truth. Thane, um, we actually didn't even, sorry, we completely missed Maul. So Maul is a brand new crew car that's on Eden Grill. And, you know, there's going to be stress being flown, like, left, right, and center here in this uh, matchup. And Maul's going to come in handy for that. Maul's a three-point crew that is scum only. Unless you have Ezra Bridger in your list, then you can take him on the Rebel side as well, yeah. which is very thematically relevant. I love it to death. If you've watched the Star Wars Rebels uh, Season 6, you'll understand what I mean. 
spoiler alert, it's amazing. There's six seasons of Rebels? So there's four seasons. Sorry, there's season four three. Seasons there's of four Rebels. seasons of Rebels. We're actually on a mid-season break of season four, and then the second half of season four is going to finish things off, and the storyline is rumored to then end right where Rogue One starts. Oh, wow. I guess I have a lot of Rebels to watch. Yeah, so interestingly, Maul crew interacts perfectly with Ezra. Why don't you finish off with the, uh, what Maul crew does there? Oh, so Maul crew, um, it's kind of like Zuckus. Um, you can, as long as you're not stressed, you can re-roll as many of your attack, attack dice as you want, and you take that many stress. If you deal a hit, then you remove one of those stress. Correct. So if you use it conservatively, um, you can kind of treat it like a predator, almost. Um, and how it interacts with Ezra crew, which I think it, what it was intended uh, to be played with is that you stress yourself, you get the reroll, and then you trigger Ezra crew, which is if you're stressed, you can turn, what is it, a hit or a focus to a crit? We, sorry, which one's this? Ezra crew. Ezra crew is a focus to a crit if you are stressed. Stressed. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So you're supposed to pair it with a Maul in that sense. Correct. But it's, it's tough to find a ship that has, can yes. handle six points of crew and still be effective in that mid. I mean, you could exactly. do like a ghost or something like that, or yeah, or yeah. maybe a falcon. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I love AP five in this list as well because AP 5s pilot ability says when you do a coordinate action before you give the ship the free action, you may take two stress tokens to remove one stress token. Yeah. So Eric's even got counter stress mitigation in his list. That's um, true. Mike's going to have to bring his A game if he wants a chance in this game. Yeah. I didn't realize how good AP5 was until uh, I played against one of our locals here, Joe Silva, with it. That thing is incredible. Um, incredible value there, uh, Alan. He's got six points of upgrades on it and he's still coming in at just a incredibly valuable 21 points yeah and if you have a ship doing a k turn or a talon so just for example for whatever reason if she wants to break formation you can next turn strip that stress give her an action and uh and she can do whatever maneuver she wants so it's a really good recovery tool and yeah, in general, I mean, worst case scenario, you're giving it a, uh, a focus to one of those reinforcing ships as coordinate. Well, Mike flew a list earlier in his PTL season because both these players have had successful seasons. Um, it was AP5 with three B-wings that had advanced sensors and link battery. Jesus. So they could just 2K turn all day long as AP5 had... R2 Astromex, all the twos are green, and inspire, <laughs> an inspiring recruit. Oh. So he just pulls his own two stress tokens off and he can clear somebody's stress every turn. That's brilliant. It's just brutal. Mike is one of our better less, uh, list builders in terms of creativity and just kind of finding things that are fun. Trying for broken. a target lock on AP5 there. Oh, yeah. We should probably get back to this game. No, it's fine. You're okay. absolutely right. I agree. Mike's definitely one of the more creative guys yeah. that we've got going here. He's also very creatively positioned Eden Vril here. I think what you were saying earlier is probably going to come to fruition. It looks like Thane's going to get group curb stomped here in a, in a minute. He seems to be in range of all three of um, Eric's ship, which would mean that he'd take nine almost fully modded dice. Yeah, and even if Thane makes it through this round, I'm not really sure where he can go. I mean, Vector Thrusters gives him some arc dodging capability, but if those two Ostars just do a one bank up towards the center of the board, I'm not really sure where Thane can go without dying. So Mike just asked um, about the interaction between Thane's ability and Tactician. Okay, it's a fair a fair call. I think uh, Aaron just ruled that it's whoever has an issue with Tactician. Yeah. So it's an interesting question that was uh, ruled here or asked is what triggers first, Tactician or Thane's pilot ability? Being that if there's an attack that occurs against somebody else, do I get a free action? Uh, the answer is determined by initiative. So in this case, Eric's Tacticians would trigger before Thane's ability. Mike really needed that initiative roll to go his way. Um, the way it's come into this, Mike's got to get pretty creative. Yeah. So it looks like we've got range three. Uh, Ezra's going to fire first. Ezra's probably only got range to number two at this point, or red two, I should say, on the uh, on on uh, Eric's side. Number two would be rolling two green dice with a focus and a reinforce. So I'd be very surprised if uh, Ezra's going to get in here. Ezra has taken a stress token to deal a stress token to number two. And we've got Ezra's shot. 
Uh, no, you, no need to use anything like that. Just one. Must use the reinforce. Here comes a loop. Hit crit. No need for loop. Wasn't that the loop shot? Uh, the second shot was a loop shot. Yeah. So we've got two stress on number two. He won't be getting a reinforce anytime soon. He's going to use the reinforce uh, on that two and be fine. Yep. No damage dealt from Ezra. Thane's up next. Yep. Thane's probably going to take a shot at number two as well because one of the key uh, points in X-Wing is what, Alan? Uh, split your fire. Always split your fire, especially yeah. when you're shooting at Alan Fung. You <laughs> would definitely want to shoot at Kylo the first turn and then Omega Leader the second turn and just keep alternating back and forth. It's the most efficient way to win. <laughs> Yeah, generally, totally lying. Generally, like, yeah, definitely focus fire. Even if that ship hasn't taken damage, if you're stripping tokens, just keep pounding away. Oh, Mike, I don't know if this is the right time to spend your target lock, buddy. You're going to need that when you get super stressed about two turns from now. Oh, there it goes. Is it range two? Uh, well, whether or not number two is range two will be determined when we... Uh, yeah, nothing there. That was a tactician shot, so we've got number two... Rolling just one dice, it is range two. Reinforced for nothing from nobody. This is about to get real ugly for Thane. Aiden Vril getting his bonus die from his pilot ability, shooting at number two. Oh, I'm he's shooting at Jess. Oh, no, of course, no, Jess, yeah. is, Jess has got initiative. I'm really excited to see these, um, these weapons engineer rerolls kick in. They're going to pay off. I can already feel it. Well, I mean, we, we saw... Um, oh, that's a good uh, one. Yep. That's paying off right there. That's paying Let's off the dividends that. right there. Just spending it. Double hit the crit. Uh, rolling two dice. Microverso on defense. Definitely range two. Uh, three. three. Uh, sorry, range three. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, so we got two shields coming up off the of Thane. It's a good start for Eric. It's amazing how seemingly, like seemingly unthreatening ships. It's like a low PS T70, like Jess. Two little Wookiees at PS1 and a little she that beat. It seems so unthreatening, but it's really like 11 red dice fully modded. Yeah. Everything is unthreatening until you joust it, right? Because <laughs> then even a TIE well fighter, two TIE fighters at 24 points, that's relatively threatening based on, you know, everything. That could be four damage. So. so your recommendation then is not to joust three gunboats with a with a TIE silencer? Is that is that your recommendation? Hey, I tried to... I, I tried to dodge two arcs. <laughs> I, mate, tried to, I was trying to get behind. Mate, he beat me too. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about what it is. I watched I, him his game. It was a great game. Rolled, if I barrel rolled? Oh, yeah. I was gone. You were gone. Ah, I forgot the barrel roll. It's okay. I forgot to K-turn in mine. It's fine. Uh, looks like only one damage going through on that one. That was Eden shooting at number two. Did we get any damage on that? I don't think we got any damage on that one, did we? One shield on Jess. One shield on Jess. That was that. Okay. That's fine. I That's think fine. she can live with that. Yeah. This is... Yeah. I mean, Mike doesn't really have any options here. I think, I think unfortunately, his list is just not equipped to deal with a, a sledgehammer like Eric's list. Well, more importantly, I think it's entirely unfortunate that... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's getting those mods, too. Jesus. Yeah. That's going to hurt. Yep, there's two going through on that one. Yeah. Mike's list really isn't built to deal with uh, lower PS ships than Eden. He's got that anti-pursuit laser big base ship. He really wanted to get him in there. That looks like a damaged engine. Damaged engine, yep. All turns are red on Thane. Yep. Because, well, I mean, that's not the end of the world. The greens are the straights to the banks anyway, so. Yeah. Was it going to get actions again anyway? Here comes the other one. He's going to get one reroll here. No focus. M9 G8 reroll, yep. which Eric is very accustomed to, being a seasoned Kanan Lorik player. So it takes a crit. That... Thrust control fire. Oh, well. Receive a stress token. I guess it doesn't really matter, but... Just to summarize, that is 10 stress tokens on the board after the first round of shooting. This is disgusting. <laughs> there's so many. I, I, I went up to both the players at the beginning of the game, and it's like, I feel like there's going to be... A lot of stress tokens in this game. Poor, poor uh, Eden, man. Eden just wants to get in there, not be stressed, and like you know, take advantage of Maul. But instead, 
just gonna, you're just gonna get stressed and destroyed in one turn after Thane dies. So there are people in our in our in our league that have loved Eden Vril since like Wave Seven. Joe, Mike, uh, my buddy Milan, like everybody loves these ships, and it's been all this time. And Eden is as happy as a pig and shit right now because he's got stress tokens everywhere, so he's getting his bonus no matter who he shoots at. And you're right, this is not the matchup he wanted to find himself in. But you know what? It's it's not over till the last die rolls, unless you're me and you tilt after the first round of combat. So, I mean, we'll see. Like Eden, <laughs> this is a lot of weight for Eden to carry. I don't, I don't care how good Eden is. I mean, is... Eric's got a lot of firepower, but Stresra is extremely hard to burn down. So, so this is what it'll take for for Mike to win. I think. If he can distribute the stress, get Eden into superior position behind those ships and start pounding into multi-stress, uh, non-reinforced Ossex, he might be able to burn one, maybe two down, and then he should be well-equipped to take on Jess if necessary. But, I mean, the AP5 is still going to have Arc on him once in a while. Yeah, I mean, the, the dangerous thing if it did come down to Eden versus Jess is that Jess would shoot first and nominate our 3A2 or not, and then she would be stressed for Eden's return shot, so that's a bit of an interesting one-on-one -on -one there. But, I mean, like, after the first round of combat, uh, Eric has one shield missing on Jess, and Mike has shields down and two into Hull, which were both crits on uh, Thane. But the other side of that coin, of course, is that uh, AP5 can't pull off all of the stress tokens from number two, so he's probably going to just reinforce uh, maybe Jess, I don't know, but one of the things that I see here is that number two is getting no focus and he's getting no reinforce this turn. So you're going to get possibly a four-die primary from Eden, possibly a four-die primary from Thane, and you know a gunner shot from Ezra. So, you know, can... I think that's fine. I think, I think if you put number two, just one bank up, it doesn't matter. Even if you take some damage, wipe Thane off the board. You probably still have some leftover shots to start tripping and damage into Eden or Ezra if you really have to. I think, uh, I think it has a hull to withstand this because if you get Thane off the board, again, it's just Eden that... One stress, sure, three attack turret, but I don't think it's enough. It's amazing how undervalued the Kashyyyk defenders are at 26 points. You know, it's, it's a great addition to a list. I feel that a Kashyyyk defender is a great, hardy fortress to put Sabine on if you wanted to do something uh, like in the bombing fashion. Like if you wanted to put a Kashyyyk defender, one of those new rebel bombers, and put the Sabine on the def on the uh, defender. You can fit like a few Zs or a, a Rex and a X Wing in there, kind of thing. Yeah. Like, you get some really interesting Rebel combinations with how point efficient these new ships that have come out are. T and Tactician is just great on them. I mean, short of a Phantom Two, they're they're probably the best Tactician platform in terms of cost. You're paying 24 points, you get a 180 degree arc, you have tight turns, you have reinforced, you don't want to shoot the damn thing because it takes forever to kill, and it only costs 26 points. Uh, it's PS1, you can block, it's it's just a solid ship. Yeah, it's almost never not getting its reinforce. If you, yeah. put it, if you put it into a position where it has to run into you, then it's like, okay, I'll run into you, block you, or maybe i make you go somewhere you don't want to go because I'm in your way. Like. They're, uh, they're incredibly efficient ships. And I think that not enough people gave them credit when they first came out. And people looked at it, it's, oh, it's a wooden ship in space, myself included. Um, and just, you know, I love what Eric's doing here. Yeah, 180 arcs with three attack dice with reinforce. Pretty good. Who knew? So he's going to reinforce the front. You want to run through uh, for any new reviews that we have, Alan, exactly how the reinforce token works? Yeah, the easiest way to think about it is is, is if you reinforce the front and if you can shoot that ship, when it shoots you, you get an, you get an additional evade result when defending. Um, and then if you can't shoot that ship, then uh, you don't. So Unless you, you reinforce to, the back. Exactly. Right. In which case, you have to be rear reinforced to benefit. Right. That's the easiest way to think about it. I, I think like there's a lot of confusion in terms of how the wording is, but um, generally it has 
mostly to do with whether or not the Oztuck itself can shoot at the ship. Great positioning here by Eric. He's uh, used number three to block number two. Number two wasn't going to get actions anyway. Give him a little bit more range control in the following turn. Oh, that's a bump, though. That's uh, Bump City population, Eric Z. Yeah, I think... I think he's going for oops. I think he's going for arcs here, but um, perhaps he forgot EP5's ability. I don't think it would have mattered too much. I mean, Jess can one bank to her left, and she's going to get the arc she wanted anyway. But it just means to pull an additional uh, stress off of number two. Well, it's true, but I mean, like next turn he can clear both, right? If number two does a green and AP5 does his thing, then number two will be without stress next turn. Yeah. I think that us trying to extrapolate who's going to have stress and who's not is completely pointless, considering almost every ship on the board throws stress, with the exception of AB5. For sure, for sure. <laughs> okay, so just did the one bank left and focused up. Uh, we've got four straight, or four straight, which is great. Eden's having nothing, none of it. Dodge Jess's arc. Looks that's, like he's dodged number two's arc as well. That's the right move. Uh, which is great, because if he barrel rolls here with Eden, he could do a one turn right the following turn, and he'll get a probably a range one shot I think on the to, tokenless uh, defender. I think he needs to focus here, because this is his opportunity to... Yep, that's the right call. This is his opportunity to put some significant damage into number two. Um, he doesn't have a reinforce. He's about to be stressed. Is that a three forward from Thane? That's not a bad maneuver. No, nope. smashes right into Jess's face. That's a Might good... still keep Ark on number two here. Oh, be close. Ooh. Might just be out. Might just be out here, folks. I mean, ultimately... Oh. Well, now it's in. Uh, they need to fix that. Our judge for the evening, uh, Aaron P, is right on scene. He's going to be uh, letting everybody know what the story is in a minute. I mean, ultimately, the, the the best primary target on Eric's list is AP5. If you can burn down AP5, the weapons engineer goes away. So mm -hmm. then the Kashyyyk defenders lose their rerolls. Normally, I would agree, but if this is your opportunity to take a 180 free attack ship off the board while it doesn't have reinforce up, I think this is the shot. Because if you can if you can crush it, assuming that Thane has Arc on it, he could strip its shields and deal like three damage to it. Yeah, Thane still has his M9 G8 uh, reroll as well. Does he? Yes, he does. On who? Who does he have locked? Yeah, because uh, Mike target locked Thane with his uh, M9 G8. We've got uh, Ezra doing a range one shot no, Thane, on Jess. Thane has M9. Thane has the M9 G8, right? Yeah. Yeah, so who did he target lock? Oh, I don't know. Uh, he target locked one of the other. He spent it last turn, too, as well. Just one hit from uh, Ezra on Jess there. Hopefully oh, Jess yes. will uh, hopefully Jess will dodge this and there yeah. we go. We're gonna okay, R three eight two that again. I, oh, does he not have an arc on number two? That no, I don't think he does. So why did he only roll two dice there? Ooh, that is rough. I know all about that. Rough die on stream. No damage going through on Jess Papa. Uh, next we've got Thane. Looks like he's got a range two shot on Ezra. I think they're going to check the arc on Thane on number two. Yeah. Aaron's going to get right in there. I think it's still out, even with the... Oh, boy. That's super tight. So we're, we're ruling there is arc. That's okay. Uh, range one from Thane on to the Kashyyyk defender. Nope. I think it's range two. You think it's range two in arc there? Okay. Yeah. No, he's definitely shooting at AP5. Tactician stress. Almost every ship on the board is stressed now, Alan. <laughs> Jess Baba has initiative. She's going to shoot at Stresra. She's got all the rerolls in the world she needs for days here. She doesn't need any of them. Just going to focus. That's disgusting. Uh, Strezra is going to not need a focus mod at all. Take a shield and two hull. So Ezra down to two hull here. I think the defenders might be able to finish him off. 
We're going to see that in just one second. So Eden's shot is coming up now. This is incredible, though. The weapons engineer goes through the stress. Those things will have mods for days. Yeah, I mean, like, one of the, one of the back and forths when you play three Wookiees is they're all Wookiee Liberators. Do I give them Predator or do I give them Expertise? This is both. Because you're, you're getting you're getting the best of both worlds. They can still take tactician, right? They're still getting an offensive reroll, uh, and it's for less points because you've also got a third gun in there. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you can still afford just Pava. <laughs> yeah, that's the nasty part. This is a very strong list. Focuses for three. Yep, he mauled the third die there, and it looks like he's gonna be able to hit and remove that stress if Maul hits here. So it looks like he's shooting Jess here? No, I'd say he's shooting at AP5. Nope, it is Jess, you're right. Okay, so two more damage go through on Jess. Jess's shields are down, Maul hit, off goes the stress. Hmm. Like Dash Rendar with an HLC and not caring about rocks has trouble with Wookiees. I can't imagine what Eden would have to do in the late game to pull this off here, Alan. Yeah, Eden's a lot cheaper, but... Number two doing his uh, M9G8 re-roll here, because of course he doesn't have a focus token. Just That's brutal. Three hits at a crit, rough. shooting at Thane. That's I think that Thane. might be it for Thane. Yep. One, two, three, and a crit. Boom. And I think Ezra's up next. Yeah, they're just going to pause for a minute and try not to remove Thane. It could screw a few things up. We're going to see who else... Uh, who else gets blown off the map here in one turn? M9 G8 reroll for three. And Strezra gets to that. Two go through, down goes okay. Ezra. So the offensive sheer brutality of Eric's list really showing itself here uh, with those Kashyyyk defenders getting those mods at range one. Yeah. Uh, AP5 may or may not have Arc on Eden. It's his only target, so whether he has arc or not, and we're going to determine. I think he probably should, yeah. Maybe not? Maybe, maybe not. Yep, we got arc. We have arc. <laughs> that was super funny. I like it. Pouring salt in the wind. Up and down goes the die. Oh. Mike just getting no help from none of his dice here today. The greens are not liking him. All right, Eden. I'm sure he's got this. The good news is, is that he has probably three or four turns where he gets to activate Maul and his ability on the same turn. So full mods with the additional die, but... Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be tough for... Um, yeah? Ma it's going to be tough for Eric to maintain range two on Eden at this point. And Eden's got a fair amount of stress still on the board to utilize. Might give him an opportunity to burn down Jess and just go uh, against the uh, uh, the AP5 and the two Wookies. Because, well, no, unfortunately at this point, Eric would need to kill three of Mike's ships. If Mike, sorry, Mike would need to kill three of Eric's ships. If Mike loses half points on Eden, then he'd have to kill all, all of uh, uh, Eric's list to win. So we're going to see a tall order from Eden Brill here, but I believe. Do you believe, Alan? No. No, you don't believe at all? <laughs> no, I do not believe in Eden. This right is like now. turn six of your match from the weekend where I'm leaning into the mic and I'm saying, I believe in Alan Fung. Dude, that was rough. <laughs> that was rough. Hey, man, we both had a rough one. It was a, it was a really great weekend. Um, it was really great for VWTV Live to be able to muster all of their gear out of Toronto Regionals and then set up so quickly again on Wednesday. Uh, we really appreciate all the work that Travis and uh, Victor put in over the weekend to capture Toronto Regionals uh, from all the great squads that came in over Ontario, all over Ontario. Um, we needed to get the top eight of the PTL Season 10 cut going as soon as possible because uh, we got to get everything finished probably by mid-February because then it's uh, lead up to nationals in March. Any idea what you're uh, gonna think about running between now and uh, March? No idea, I haven't thought about it. Even for regionals, I just picked a list that I'd flown two games with before, so 
Yeah, I was happy to make top eight with it. Um, Silence is really fun. It's a super uh, fun ship. Yeah, I had a lot of fun flying it. Well, I mean, the first time I looked at your list and I saw um, no title on Kylo, I was like, oh, what? Yeah, you kind of need the one-point bid against Miranda. But oh, no, 100%, not, yeah. I guess not anymore, because no one's running region Miranda anymore. And no one's running Eagle, apparently. Everyone's just running Nim Miranda, so. Anyway. Well, so Eric Z contemplating how he's going to trap Eden Vril at this point. Um, he wants to, looks like he wants to move number two first. Okay. So he's going to turn number two. Interesting. He wants to preserve the range one. On Jess, because Jess is probably going to do a one bank after AP5 stresses, or sorry, removes one stress and then to focus. So Eric's playing it safe, which is the right call. Jess is double stressed, is she? Right now, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So AP5 she's will. She's about to have yeah. zero. Yeah, that's true. So Jess will, or AP5 will move first. Number three, I imagine, is doing a three bank or something. Going to start spreading wide. Yeah, three bank from number three is actually a really good call. Because then he might be able to start getting the uh, range two arcs back in shape. But uh, right now he's just cruising, which is fine. Moving right along. Should be pulling his stress here. AP5 going to consider his pilot ability at this point. Can you coordinate a double stress ship? Well, you can. It, just, it can't do its action? That's true. Is that it? So you, the ship, can take the coordinate action. I don't believe that the ship that you're yeah. coordinating would be able it's to take an action, action but you you would still get to remove the stress token. Yeah, that's the main thing that I'm wondering. I'm wondering if AB5 can even remove that second stress. I would assume you can, but we could be wrong. I think that's what they're asking Aaron at this very moment. So we're just going to let the judge make a quick judgment call and determine whether or not that is possible. I mean... The way the cards are written, the coordinate action, um, I would say that you'd have to pick a ship that is not stressed, maybe? But uh, I'm not sure. I think the other thing Eric might be considering right now is that if he does do that, he's going to pull the stress. That gives Mike the extra die when he's shooting at, shooting at AP5. So, Ooh, that is true. That is true. So I think... I think he's, yeah, electing not to coordinate whether or not you can. And that ship already moved, so... Number three hasn't moved, has it? Oh. Uh, I don't think it has, but I could be wrong. Okay, so I mean, no reason for Eric to overcommit himself here at this point. He's got... Oh, they're just marking Jess. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he's doing it too hard. Now, you've said on numerous occasions that you believe that the Azatuck gunship should have a red too hard. Absolutely. Look at the dead space between its initial position and this maneuver. There's almost none. It's almost none. If you have two that are cycling... Um, it's like two sharks in the water. It's just... Yeah. You, you can't dodge those arcs. So, anyone that's... Anyone that's ever flown a one agility ship facing off, facing off against two of these guys, it feels like you're just flying against like two turreted ships. Um, and then on the on the flip side of that, when you're flying as an ace, you're never getting out of both those arcs. They don't trigger auto thrusters in 180 degrees uh, unless you're at range three. So it's it's nasty. It's a pain to deal with. And yeah, I, I definitely think the two hard should be red. Especially considering how cheap the ship is, but I think it's fine, though. I mean, the ship is good. There's no problem with that. Think, uh... Interesting. It looks like um, Eric has actually opted with AP5 to remove one of his M9 G8 target locks from red number two and replace it with an offensive target lock on Eden Brill which can be used as a target lock or it can be used to mitigate one of Eden Brill's attack dice. So in case Eden rolls a crit, you can just say, I don't like that crit, roll that roll that bugger again. This is really good positioning by Eric. That Fringer, or sorry, that YT is going to take a ton of heat right now. Yeah, it looks like he's got at least three guns on him. Uh, well, two guns for sure. And then number two looks like it's probably in range because of course the 180 firing arc is a beast. It's in range of number two. It's going to take a stress from number three, most likely. It's definitely going to take a stress from Jazz. So that's, we're talking about a double stress Eden here. No longer going to be able to maul. Um, 
So I guess the extra die? Just, yep, but... just has an initiative here. Oh, oh uh, we've got Black Market Slicer Tools going on. On Jess. Eden from Jess. Yeah, as an action. So Mike is going to roll a die. Ah, oh, I feel that burn. I've been there. Okie dokie. So Jess goes up first. She looks like she's got range two in arc. Uh, she's going to shoot. Check for her re-rolls. She's definitely got two ships in range one there. Uh, nothing. It's just one. Oh, Mike's dice continuing to offer him no favors. It's kind of like my game that just got posted. Which one? <laughs> my game from the last one where I rolled uh, four blanks twice. And oh, please. <laughs> I saw a lot of natties, too. They were just at times when you didn't need them. <laughs> yeah, it's like I have one hit. I roll four natties. I heard you, too. You're like, oh, now I get this? <laughs> uh, okie dokie. So Aiden's shot. Interesting that Jess didn't stress Eden. You're going to like my commentary from that match, by the way. I can't wait to watch that video. Dude, yeah. I, I, I lost my shit because I called your, uh, your two... Your two deep cloak uh, 4K. Oh, nice. I was praying for you to do it because that, like, that's the ballsy but right move. Well, I, as you you know, my my record playing games on stream as it is. Is it uh, uh, zero wins? Yeah, this I mean, one now. Well, both Tony and I wanted to have a really casual match because uh, he's been playing for a while. I've been playing a little bit longer, but we, it was the first Mercs match that it ever got on stream. And, you know, both of us were pretty nervous. I'm nervous because of my record. He was nervous because it's his top eight cut on stream. So, you know, we just wanted to keep it casual, and it ended up being a pretty casual game. And uh, it was great. I'd love to play with Tony again, and I wish him luck next season. How good is it to have the game school guys out? I'm really happy that the game school guys are great. It really offers a great gateway to Toronto from the Durham region. Yeah. I'm really, really hoping that someone's going to step up and do something similar for X Planet and Mississauga, and get a few players out that way, getting uh, some of our, our PTL uh, reps going. I know Jeff Asiri plays out of that store, um, and now that I work in Oakville, I'm happy to play out of that store as well. If somebody would invite me, but I work in Oakville now. I do work in Oakville now. Yes. You know, I grew up in Oakville. Right? You grew up in Oakville. Wow. Are you gonna go to golf? No. No. I'm not that white. <laughs> So Eden Vril, uh, continuing to get punished, now has half health and has been tasked with defeating all of Eric's ships. This, so this is exactly where Mike wants to be uh, for all you viewers, you know? This is where Eden's just going to clean everything up. It's the magic comeback, right? Oh, wait, this isn't Dash. My bad. I think even to push the limit Dash would have <laughs> trouble at this point. So yeah, what are we gonna get here? We got a, maybe a, uh, I'm thinking an AP5 is gonna pull one of those stress off Jess and show one bank boost. We got a one bank left from number three here to keep his arc nice and wide, or even a one forward. Oh, interesting. So Eric elected not to, to, to Arthur A2 stress for two stress on Eden. So it looks like it just got the tactician from number three. So there's a chance that Eden might be able to slip for this turn. No, I think he did, because Jess has two stress tokens, right? She, uh, she she had two at the beginning. And did did Eden's attack hit though? Did Maul remove one well, of them? Maul adds one before you can remove one. Add one and then remove one. Okay. And you have to be you, you can't be stressed to use it. Yeah. That's true. So okay. either they didn't do the tactician. Yeah. No, they definitely didn't do R three A two. Okay. Uh, Jess had two. Makes sense. Which is fine. Eric is in a great, great position right here. The room is literally on fire all around Eden Brill, and he's sitting in the middle of it going, this is fine, everything's fine, no, no problem. He's got he's got a smuggling compartment with uh, Black Market Slicer Tools. He's got, he's, got Black Spark, he's got a Black Market Slicer Tool, two Kashyyyk Defenders down, <laughs> one slicer at a time. He's gonna guide them right through those debris over and over again, block them with anti-pursuits, keep them on them. Yeah, it was a rough, uh, rough matchup for Mike in the end. Um, it's one of the challenges of being in the PTL Top 8 cut. It's a great time for us to go through this because both these players are playing what I would say is atypical lists based on what they play in competitive scenes. Yes. And one of the challenges of being in the PTL is that when you get to the Top 8 cut, you've already played seven games and you have to continue to use named pilots and lists of generics that you haven't used already. 
So what do I put up against somebody I know that plays this type of stuff when I can't use these or I'm saving those in case I beat them? Strikers. The answer is always strikers. The answer is always strikers. It's true. For further details, go and see the uh, PTL Season 8 and 9 final games. No, wait, you were 7. 7 and 9, seven. right? 7 and 9, yeah. You know what? There's just so much beautiful content on the VWTV Live YouTube channel. I, I get lost now. Interesting whether or not Mike will actually have to uh, decide to stay at range 2 or barrel roll into range 1 of that Kashyyyk Defender. I'm pretty sure we're going to see AP5's pilot ability here for the first time there, uh, Alan. I'm really hoping we are anyway. AP5, done his one forward. He's got his two MG9 target locks already. There it comes, oh, takes two stress. We did it, boys. So we've established then that you don't get, S just doesn't get an action, but yeah. she does get to move. Because it's okay. a free action. But at least you do get to strip it, which is nice. No prod label. Nice leisurely one bank from number two. He'll be free of stress the following turn. This is a really cool build. It's. It's a relatively strong build, but like I just love how it has three PS1s and just as your ace, has tons of stress, has ways to get rid of stress, has a lot of combat efficiency. Um, and you know what? If you wanted a bid, you could even take Jess down to like a flight ass just astromech, and it really wouldn't be that big. You still have two other stress mechanics. You could give it a freaking like. You could give her auto thrusters if you wanted to. You could give Jess, you could swap Jess for a stress hog if you really wanted to bone someone, but you probably don't even need that. There's so much stress here. Oh, it's true, but I mean, the combination of Jess being able to Talon roll and then AP5 pull it off, to your point earlier, it's 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 the combination of having AP5 in the background. Yeah. Because AP5 is the primary target here. You definitely want to uh, take him out because... He's the one giving the M9G8 weapons engineer locks to the to the the Wookies. Oh. Here we go. So you know, that was a three hard turn. Yeah. Uh, which I believe is a white move. Right. Still stressed. Yeah. Still dead. Looks like Jess has no arc there. Aaron will make his ruling oh in just a moment. Uh, he, she might have him. That looked awfully close on the uh, bottom edge there. Indeed. Looks like he's clear. So Mike's going to take a shot. Looks like he's probably going to want to shoot at... AP? I would shoot at AP5. Yeah, he's stressed. Get the bonus die, right? We also have a bonus die versus number three. Well, number three's not stressed. No, but your range one. <laughs> yeah. But fair. but a, number three is also completely untouched. It's fair I mean, point. AP5 has a full shield down. Yeah, I mean, the math is actually possible that you could take out AP5. Is but, it? well, yeah, you'd need to roll three and one of them be a direct hit. But okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. Let's see what happens here. Mike's going to shoot at AP5. And, nope. Oh, He's off to a good start. Could, Major what? Oh, he's oh. got M9G8, of course. Oh man! There goes the uh, there goes the mathematical Dreams chance. Crushed. Dreams crushed, indeed. One damage going through on the sheet of peed. Right. Maul hits, no more stress. And I think Eden might be free of stress this turn. All he has to do is survive. He's gonna take two shots from the Wookies. Number two is probably gonna go first. Strip uh, the hypothetical tokens. What'd you say about surviving? Well, number two doesn't have an M9G8 roll, so he just has to roll two. Oh, there you we did go. It. Finally, his dice are kicking in. AP5 is going to go next. He's got a range two rear arc shot. And he also has a target lock on Eden. Going to spend it? Uh, no, he's going to keep it. Probably not. Keep yeah. it for defense. And then the defender is going to go next. Uh, the Wookiee, I should say. Well, the Kashyyyk defender. That, that stings. That's yeah. a lot of crits. It's an obscene amount of crits. All right, so I'll bet you a coffee that Eden dies here. I will take that bet. I'm shaking Alan hand. I think Eden's going to survive. Well, mathematically, obviously, like the chances 
Chances of him surviving are higher. So he's see. taking three crits. Three crits. Uh, two of them have to be direct to die. Yep. Uh, we're off to a good start. Loose stabilizer. White's. Uh -oh. Oh, man. And then a second loose stabilizer. And then a major hull breach. I'm getting you one from coffee time, though. I hate coffee time. Good. Keep your coffee. <laughs> I don't even want it. I'll just take the satisfaction of winning the bet. I just wanted to see Eden die in one shot. That would have been hilarious. Are you in a hurry to get home? Is that it? No, but it would have been funny. <laughs> I mean, Eden poor, deserves a poor quick... Mike, poor Mike Reverso shows up with an amazing list, and you're just like, oh, I want to see him get triple critted in one turn, dude. hilarious. It would have been pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. I feel bad for Thane. I mean, Eden's just asking for it, but... He looks too much like Dash. Yeah, he's a Dash wannabe. Not as much as Lebo. Lebo's all right. So what do you think about the interaction between something like a Lebo and... Uh, an Ion Discharger. I always thought that a, a Wild Fringer with uh, Anti Pursuit Lasers, Lebo Crew, and um, an Ion Discharger would be really cool because you could force straight, boost with Lebo, and then if you're in range one, Ion Discharge it. Uh, remind me how Ion Discharge works. Ion Discharger says if when you receive an Ion token, if there is an enemy stress, sorry, if there's an enemy ship within range one, you simply do not receive that Ion token. And then the enemy ship decides whether or not it wants to take an ion token to break your ion discharger. Yeah. So... Because you'd basically get three free boosts with uh, Eden or with a Wild Fringer as a blocker before anybody could actually ionize and it. And that's an extra free action, correct? It doesn't cost you an action, does it, Lebo? What does it cost you an action? The Lebo boost. It, it well, it's Elibo crew is, it says as an action, perform a boost and get take an ion token. So my question for you then is, why wouldn't you just take engine upgrade? Because Lebo's like one point. I think he's two, and ion discharger is two. So it is four. Yeah, fair. I don't know. I mean, you get style points, and I mean, those are priceless. So yeah, I would go for the Lebo build. Just, 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 to make, just to make my opponent think about it. Just to make him think about wait, what the what yeah. and the who and the how. And like when when your opponent asks you why didn't you just take engine upgrade, you'd be like, are you kidding me? This is way better. Because then I don't then, have Lebo. I and mean, then, and then they're panicking because then they're like, uh, uh, okay, I will I will take the ion, and then you win the game. Do you have any idea how many people always say to me, oh, why do you have an engine upgrade on your caster? Why don't you just take countermeasures? <laughs> Well, Mike Reverso uh, showcasing those absolutely snazzy PTL crit tokens. I want some. I want some of those, too. I feel like Bilbo Baggins from that scene in Lord of the Rings where Frodo has the ring around his neck, and he goes, <sighs> try to get it. You just wanted more sound effects. I love sound effects. I'm on to you, Tim. Look, don't make me pull out my soundboard and start singing the final countdown, okay? Because oh I will. Oh, God. Wait, is that what you've been doing for all these uh, commentating casts? Not all of them. There's been a mixed opinion on the sound effect board of the little pew pew pews and the blow ups and stuff like that. By mix, what ratio are we talking about? Literally like 50 50 down the road. Uh -huh. So if you're watching this. To ten, 9 to 10 is still a mix. Or 9 to 1, rather. So if you're watching this video, folks, and you're loyal VWTV Live uh, viewers, and you want to see and hear more cheesy pew 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 sound effects, during PTL casted uh, videos, feel free to chime in, comment on the stream, okay. uh, but the thing and is, let us know. The comment has to be sound effects. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. don't say I want more sound effects. We just want to see pew 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 and Wookie roars and shit like that. And stay on targets. Yeah. Otherwise, it won't count. Yeah. Stay on targets. And, oh and one person needs to sing the final countdown. One hundred percent. Stay tuned as well, folks. So this is going to be a video and a stream coming up uh, for the entirety of the Season 10 PTL Top Cuts, our uh, milestone 10th season of play. And we've got a great player base that's made the top cut, including players from all over the city. Uh, we're going to be casting as many of the top eight matches as we can, uh, as hopefully we can get both the top fours and the finals online uh, as well. Uh, probably going to have all the videos posted by sometime near the end of February. So, if right. you're watching this one, just stay tuned. So, your secret's safe with me. What are you thinking of flying for the next round? Uh, it, will, it will depend on whom I play, which is also random. 
Is it? Oh, it yeah, is yeah, random. Yeah. We do random matchups for top eight, not based on position. Oh, okay. So I pulled Tony H uh, randomly for the top eight. I will include it in that will be the winner of this game, the winner of Dan W versus Kelvin. Kelvin yeah. And the other matchup is escapes me at the moment. Is Jeff in it? No, I think so. The uh, the other, I've got it here. Here, hang on one second. We have uh, Eric Z. It's, of course, it's Evan Cameron uh, versus Jeff Asiri. God, I hate that Evan guy. He's a terrible human being. I had one of the most amazing. What happened with Andy Pursuit Lasers there? Who bumped into Eden? Of course, Jess bumped into Eden. So we've wow. got one damage from Jess Pava. We got to see Andy Pursuit Lasers trigger. Wow, it happened. I love it. Jess, of course, is still going to get a range one shot on Eden when he moves oh, in a second. Oh, please, Black Market Slicer Tool, and then finish Jess off with a shot. Come on. Die a death of glory. Well, Jess still has... Um, oh. Jess, she still has integrated Astromech, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, he just needs to deal two damage. Jess is stressed, so Eden gets the bonus die. So regardless of whether or not he dies in this turn, which is mathematically quite possible... You didn't um, strip stress, right? So uh, he's unstressed this turn? He's still stressed this turn. No, no, no. I think he stripped it with Maul. He did strip it with Maul, actually. You're right. You're absolutely right. So he does so, get an action. Okay. He could That's... dodge one of the Wookiees. Oh, come on. Just go for it. Why? Oh, he oh, thinks he's double stressed, of course, because the <laughs> tactician just Pava shots from last turn. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah sorry. I missed all that. We're paying so much attention to this game, Alan. <laughs> Epic fail. That's okay. Well, Eric, is, uh, Eric's plethora of target lock tokens just getting left all over the board here. This is a kill box if I've ever seen one. It is. It's actually like a textbook kill box. So we've got no shot from Jess here. I would be shocked and amazed if she has arc there. Mike's giving it a hard no at that point. I don't know what the benefit of measuring after a judge makes a ruling is, but you know what? Sometimes you want to see it for yourself. That's all good. Never trust Aaron. Uh, I don't have the table mic up in front of me, Victor. Is there arc there? It's in, it's in arc. Wow. Okay, here we go. Jess. Range two. Range two in arc. Doesn't look like Jess is getting any rerolls here, so she's just got to roll like a god, which she does. No problems. Uh, I'll bet you a coffee that you didn't die, Eric. Uh, I will double or nothing a coffee. Yeah. Uh, no, oh, that's wait. a cock die. It doesn't matter. It's still dead. <laughs> Simultaneous fire still applies, but they're going to pass up. All right, well, well flown to both of our players, especially Eric, who makes it to the top four. Congratulations to Eric, and thank you very much again for casting with me, uh, Alan, and VW Live for uh, streaming our matches, and we're going to sign off. Take care, folks. See you guys. Oh, it's not for the turn kill. Wow.